Principal Doctrines, also known as Sovereign Maxims, is a collection of 40 maxims by the ancient Greek philosopher Epicurus that outlines the core of his ethical philosophy. The text focuses on the attainment of happiness through the pursuit of pleasure and the avoidance of pain. These doctrines provide a framework for living a life of tranquility free from fear and unnecessary desires. The central tenet of Epicureanism is that the goal of life is to attain the highest form of pleasure, which is the absence of pain, aponia, and a state of tranquility, ataraxia. This is achieved by living modestly, understanding the workings of the world, and limiting one's desires to the essential. Pleasure and pain are the metrics by which good and evil are measured, thus making them the basis of moral evaluation. 1-4. to four, Epicurus begins by asserting that every good is an easy acquisition, and the natural riches are both plainly seen and close at hand. Prudence, or rational consideration, is the greatest virtue, and is more valuable than philosophy itself, because it serves as the source of all other virtues. It teaches that it is impossible to live pleasurably without living prudently, honorably, and justly. Conversely, one cannot live prudently, honorably, and justly without living pleasurably. For the virtues grow together with a pleasurable life, and a pleasurable life is inseparable from them. 5-10 to 10. Epicurus explains that self-sufficiency is conducive to happiness, and we only need a small amount of pleasure once the pain of want has been removed. Bodily pain is not difficult to overcome for those who have understood that bodily pleasure is its limit. Pain does not last continuously in the flesh. Severe pain is present briefly, while long-lasting pain is mild. If a condition is too much to bear, it ends in death, leaving us beyond sensation. We should not fear death, because while we exist, death is not present, and when death is present, we no longer exist. The wise person does not deprecate life nor fear the cessation of life, for life in their mind is not a burden and its ending is not an evil. 11-20 to 20. Accustomed to simple living, one is better poised to handle sudden shifts in fortune, and a luxurious life is not grounded in pleasures of the stomach, but in active participation in scientific pursuits and other activities. Wealth measured by nature's bounds is both easy to procure and ample. Many people who have reached the limits of wealth and power have lived a worse life than ordinary persons. Lamenting over one's current circumstances, especially when it is due to chance rather than one's own choices, is pointless. Epicurus explains that for a young person it is honorable to heed wise counsel and for the aged to not be jaded on giving guidance to the young. 21-30. to 30. Friendship, according to Epicurus, is an essential component for a happy life. It is cultivated not for its utility but as an end in itself. It spreads like the radiance of a fire, starting with the beauty of personal intimacy and extending outwards to encompass humanity. The wise person will feel more intense love towards those who reciprocate and will not resent those who do not. Fear of the divine beings and of death is pointless. Gods are not to be feared. They do not involve themselves in human affairs. Death is merely the absence of sensation. According to Epicurus, Beliefs about celestial phenomena and death are often sources of fear and anxiety, which can be dispelled through proper understanding of nature. 31-40 to 40, Justice is not something that exists in its own right, but is a compact concerning mutual advantage among people in different societies to not harm or be harmed. Epicurus warns against high honors and positions of power, as these often lead to envy, enmity, and vexation. Pleasure in the flesh admits no increase once the pain of want is removed. After that, it only varies in another direction. Absolute freedom from pain in the body and from trouble in the mind are the ultimate bounds of the pleasurable life. The wise person will always consider the cost of an action and its potential impact on pleasure, avoiding actions that could result in greater displeasures. Epicurus emphasizes the need to understand the nature of things to remove the fear of the unknown, which often results in mental distress. Joyful states can arise from comprehending how the world works and diminishing the fear of the gods and death. The hedonic calculus, weighing the long-term advantages and disadvantages of actions concerning their impacts on our happiness, is a central theme in Epicureanism. Our actions should aim for long-term pleasure and tranquility rather than immediate, transient pleasure that could eventually lead to pain. 
Epicurus also recommends leading a contemplative life, one where friendships are maintained and the company of like-minded individuals is sought. Understanding the limits of desire and pleasure is crucial. Natural desires are limited and easy to satisfy, while groundless desires, such as those for fame or wealth that do not lead to a peace of mind, are to be avoided. In essence, the principal doctrines offer a guide to achieving a happy life. They emphasize a life rooted in pleasure, defined as the absence of pain, contentment with simple pleasures, the enjoyment of philosophical thought, the cultivation of friendships, and the maintenance of an equanimous mind regarding matters beyond our control such as death and the will of deities. Human beings should seek a balanced life where their desires match the natural limits of what can truly satisfy, thereby achieving the greatest form of happiness possible.